Next, we are going to learn how Treasury stock affects a company. Treasury stock is a term we use for issued shares that have been re acquired by the company. So these are shares that the company issued that they've bought back from their own shareholders. Why would a company buy back their own shares? There are several reasons, but the most common are to make shares available for employee stock purchase plans. Sometimes if they want to let the employees purchase shares of the company, instead of issuing new shares, they might just buy back shares from existing shareholders and reissue them to employees. Another reason is to buy low and sell high. Let's say that the company's stock price has gone down due to outside factors. For example, the company is doing fine. However, the stock market is reacting to some political or economic news and the shares price of the company is tanking. The management knows that this drop in share price has nothing to do with the company having any problems. So they will go ahead and buy their shares back hold them for a while and resell them when the share price goes up. If the company wants to avoid a hostile takeover, they will also go ahead and buy their own shares back. The less number of shares that are in the hands of the shareholders, the less likely that they can be bought by a company that they do not want to be taken over by. Another reason that companies would buy treasury stock is to increase earnings per share. As you will learn a little bit later, the denominator in the earnings per share is common stock outstanding, the number of shares of common stock outstanding, and the number of shares outstanding is affected by treasury stock. The number of shares outstanding is the number of shares in the hands of the shareholders. When we buy treasury stock, we are reducing the number of shares in the hands of the shareholders thereby increasing earnings per share. Now let's look at the accounting treatment of treasury stock. When we purchase treasury stock, we record the treasury stock at cost. So we record the treasury stock at whatever we pay to acquire them, not at par value like we did when we originally issued them. So what we do is we debit treasury stock for the price we paid to purchase the treasury stock and credit cash. Treasury stock is a contra stockholders equity account, which means it has a normal debit balance. Again, Treasury stock is a contra stockholders equity account with a normal debit balance. Stockholders equity accounts have normal credit balances. Contra stockholders equity account has normal debit balance. Once a company purchases Treasury stock, they can do several things. One of the things they can do is they can retire those stocks. Retiring stocks means they're going to cancel their stock certificates and canceled stocks cannot be reissued. Another thing they can do is they can resell those treasury stock and that's what we're going to take a look at in more detail. When they resell their treasury stock they're going to debit cash, credit treasury stock and then credit additional paid in capital for a price above the cost of what we paid to purchase those treasury stock. We will take a look at an example that will illustrate this a little better. Again, when you watch these examples, watch these videos, then rework these same examples and then check your solutions. It says prepare the journal entry for each of the transactions below and indicate the effect of the transaction on the assets and stockholders' equity. Post the related transactions to the T accounts. Situation A says Junkill Corporation begins operations and issues 1,000 shares of $1 par common stock for $15 a share. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how much cash we raised. We issued 1,000 shares for $15 a share. So 1,000 times 15 is $15,000. Our cash increased by 15,000, so we are going to debit cash $15,000. Now you know that these stock had $1 par value and the par value gets credited to the common stock account. So one times 1,000 shares, which is $1,000, 
will get credited to common stock. The difference between the 15,000 and 1,000 will get credited to paid in capital in excess of par, which is $14,000. That balances out your journal entry. You all know how to post journal, journal entries, so I'm going to skip that section. Requirement B says the corporation purchases 500 shares of common as treasury stock for $13 per share. Treasury stock, which is a stock that we purchase from our own shareholders, is shown at cost. So let's see how much this treasury stock costs us. We purchased 500 shares at a cost of $13 a share. So 500 times 13 is $6,500. That is how much we paid to reacquire these stocks. Once you know the cost of your treasury stock, what you're going to do is you're going to debit treasury stock for $6,500 and credit cash for $6,500 because cash went down since we had to purchase these treasury stock. Treasury stock, remember, gets debited and treasury stock is a contra stockholders equity account which means it has a normal debit balance. For requirement C, they want to know what will happen if the corporation sells 100 of the treasury shares for $16 a share. If you remember in the previous section that we discussed, we bought 500 shares of treasury stock, but we're now only selling 100 of them back and we're selling them for $16 a share. The first thing is to calculate how much is our proceeds from this sale. So how much are we going to receive when we sell these 100 shares? We're going to receive 100 times $16, which is $1,600. You know that, that you're going to receive cash, so you're going to debit cash for $1,600. Now let's look at the credit side. You know that your treasury shares are going to reduce, so you are going to have to credit your treasury stock. You're going to credit your treasury stock by the amount that you originally paid to acquire those shares. So how much did we pay to originally buy those shares? We paid $13 a share. So what you're going to do is you're going to credit treasury stock $13 times 100 shares that we just sold, which is $1,300. Again, remember that we are going to credit treasury stock for the amount that we paid to acquire that treasury stock. Now the difference, there is a difference of $300. The difference goes to your additional paid in capital. And it will say additional paid in capital treasury stock or sometimes they may put it into paid in capital in excess of par.